The topic is equations versus inequalities. The essential question is, what's the difference between equations and inequalities? So you'll see here in the first column, these are all equations, and they're equations simply because they've got an equal sign. So equations are only going to have one answer. Over here in the right-hand column, these are all inequalities. And what you should know about inequalities is there's more than one answer, so therefore that's why you have to graph their solutions on a number line. Okay? So I want to start off by just showing you that, I mean, just the difference between them. You'll notice that you're going to solve inequalities basically the exact same way, um, but you just got to make sure that you don't write an equal sign. You need to write an, an inequality in its place, okay? So the first column, um, that shows equations, so you're just going to build it like you've always been doing. Start with x, then we added 11. So the inverse operation of adding 11 is subtracting 11, and you're going to do that to both sides of that equal sign. 11 take away 11 is 0. 1 take away 11 is negative 10. So x is equal to negative 10. That's the solution. That's the one answer because it's an equation. Over here, there's an inequality. But you need to build the exact same way like you've always done. Start with x, then we added 11. Inverse operation of adding 11 is subtracting 11. You're going to do that to both sides of that equal sign. 11 take away 11 is 0. 1 take away 11 is negative 10. Bring down your x, and you're going to bring down that inequality sign. Keep it the same, okay? Keep it consistent. Now the next problem. And you're going to keep it consistent because all we did was, to solve it, all we did was just subtract a number, okay? All right, right here, same type of thing. Started with the variable, and then after that, we uh, just subtracted 15. Inverse operation of subtracting 15 is to add 15, and you're going to do that to both sides of that uh, equal sign. Negative 15 plus 15 is 0. 20 plus 15 is 35. So the value of x is 35, and that's the answer, okay? Um, next thing we got to do over here is it's an inequality, so, I mean, do the same thing. You subtracted 15 first, so now you're going to have to add 15 to both sides. Negative 15 plus 15 is 0, so x is less than or equal to 35. And, yep, all we did was to solve this, we just added 15 to both sides, so we don't do anything with the sign. It just stays consistent. And you're probably curious why I haven't um, graphed these yet. I'm going to go back at the very end and graph them because I want to give you time to graph them yourself, okay? So as we're going through this, yeah, just go ahead and set up the graph. Um, and I want you to graph them yourself, but you're going to check it at the very, very end because I'm noticing that the number one, mis one of the number one mistakes people do is when they, when they graph it, they graph it incorrectly, okay? So I'll just show you some guidelines. Just for these graphs, since there's not very much room, just put your your just your little magic number right there and then you can put your open and closed circle and go to the left or to the right okay but I'm not going to put the graph in until the very very end because I do want you right now on your own time um, without me talking I want you to go ahead and do the graph yourself and then check it at the end okay all right the next problem same thing you got to start with your variable and then after that we multiplied it by negative 9 and then we added 17. So the inverse operation that we do first is subtracting 17 from both sides of that equal sign. Um, 71 take away 17 is 54. 17 take away 17 is 0. Bring down your equal sign and your negative 9x. Go back up. Inverse operation of dividing by negative 9 is divide. To multiplying by negative 9 is to divide by negative 9. So that's what you'll do on both sides. So the value of x in this case is negative 6. Okay. So um, right here, same thing, build it. Build it the exact same way. Unbuild it the exact same way. Okay, now go back up. And inverse operation of multiplying by negative 9 is to divide by negative 9. Okay, and you do that to both sides of that equal sign. Here's something as we're working this problem. Notice I divided by a negative number read this right now and write it down. When you multiply or divide by a negative number when solving an inequality, you must flip, or you could say reverse, the inequality symbol at the end. So notice right here, I just divided by a negative number. So it's the end now, and we need to flip, you know, reverse that inequality sign. So the x was right there. The inequality sign went this way, but you know that we have to flip it, we have to reverse it, because we divided by a negative. So I'm going to really point that out right there. It was this way, so we're going to flip it that way, okay? So keep that in mind for when you go ahead and graph it. Okay, next problem. Do the same thing you've been doing. Oops, I need to get my pen here. All right, start with 
the variable, which was x, then we times it by 5, then we subtracted 4. So the inverse operation of subtracting 4 is to add 4, and you're going to do that to both sides of that inequal, uh, the equal sign. We have 5x equals a negative 25, and then inverse operation times by 5 is to divide by 5, so we'll divide both sides by 5. So x is equal to negative 5. That is the solution. Here, same thing, build it the same way. And solve it the same way. Okay, notice we just divided by a positive. It's only, you only flip the side when you multiply or divide by a negative number, okay? Multiply or divide by a negative number. We didn't do that, so it stays consistent. So right now, rate your graph. Which way would it go? Practice, practice, practice. Okay, last one on this page. Build it the same way you've always done. Start with x, then we multiplied it by negative 1 half, and we added 4. So inverse operation of adding 4 is to subtract 4, and you do that to both sides of the equal sign. Bring down your negative 1 half x, equal sign, and your 6. Okay, uh, inverse operation of um, timesing by negative 1 half is to divide by negative 1 half. Do that to both sides. Negative 1 half divided by negative 1 half is 1. 1 times x is x. Um, 6 divided by negative 1 half. And if you're like, how do you do that? Remember, you're dividing by a fraction, so you can keep change, flip it. So it's 6 divided by a negative 1 half. Okay? So keep it, change it, flip it. That says negative 1. Okay? Make that in fractional form. 6 times 2 is 12. 1 times a negative uh, 1 is negative 1. 12 divided by negative 1 is negative 12. So this solution, x is equal to negative 12. Okay, here, build it the same way. Start with x, then we multiplied it by negative 1 half, then we added 4. Inverse operation of adding 4 is to subtract 4. Do that to both sides of that inequality. 10 minus 4 is 6. Um, so you bring down your negative 1 half x, bring down your inequality. Okay, go back up. Inverse operation of timesing by negative 1 half is to divide by negative 1 half. So look right here, we're dividing by a negative number. So you should know what to do. Read that and do it. Okay, so that's 1. So you have x, and then we got 6 divided by negative 1 half is negative 12. And it's the very end, so you need to reverse the sign. Here's the sign, what it looked like before. Very end, reverse it. And go ahead and graph that, please. Okay, put your negative 12 right there. And here we go. Here's what your graphs should look like, okay? So for this one up here, since I asked you to go ahead and do it, um, you got x is bigger than or equal to negative 10. So numbers that are bigger than or equal to negative 10. I know negative 10 is a possibility because of that part right there. So bigger than negative 10 would be like 100, 200, 300. That's all to the right. Okay, this next one, x is smaller than or equal to 35. So I know it's going to be a closed circle. So x is smaller, numbers smaller than 35 are like negative 2, negative 9, negative 44, all that's to the left. Okay, right here, it says x is smaller than negative 6, so numbers smaller than negative 6 would lie to the left of negative 6, so that'd be like negative 7, negative 44, negative 99, negative a million, and that is going to be an open circle to the left. Okay, right here, x is smaller than negative 5, so numbers smaller than negative 5 would be to the left of negative 5 on the number line, so that'd be like negative 8, negative 99, negative a million, I'm just making some up. And it's going to be open circle because it's not equal to it. It goes that way. Then this one right here, we have x is less than or equal to negative 12. So x is smaller than negative 12. But it could also equal negative 12, so I'm going to fill in the circle. Smaller numbers than negative 12 would be like negative a million, negative 2 million. That all goes to the left. Okay? The summary is what's the main difference between the solutions of inequalities versus equations. You're going to practice solving these inequalities. I want you to solve the inequality and then, of course, graph your solution. So you'd start off, um, well, I would start off probably by building it. So we started with x, and then after that, they multiplied it by 3. And then after that, they subtracted 4. So the inverse operation of subtracting 4 is to add 4, and that's what you're going to do to both sides of that equal sign. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 17 plus 4 is 21. Bring down your inequality and bring down your 3 times x. Okay, and the inverse operation of multiply by 3 is to divide by 3. So now you're going to divide by 3 on both sides of that inequality sign. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 
um, 21 divided by 3 is 7, and I'm going to have to write that over here to the side, okay? So we have x is greater than or equal to 7, okay? We do not reverse or flip the inequality sign because you'll notice I did not multiply or divide by a negative number when I solved this inequality. So the other way that you should be able to write this is by um, putting the number first and then the variable second. Notice that x is greater than or equal to 7, so over here x is still greater than or equal to 7. But you could also say it as 7 is less than or equal to x. These mean the same exact thing, okay? So for your graph, I want you to try to graph it by yourself. You know, pause the video at any time. Remind yourself to pause the video. Don't just copy it, okay? All right, it's going to be a closed circle at that 7. Now, what will help you is if you write some numbers right up here that will help you um, determine which, which direction the arrow needs to go. So you'll see that x is greater than or equal to 7. So it could equal 7, but x is any value bigger than. It can also be any value bigger than 7. So numbers bigger than 7 are like 8, 9, 10, a million, 2 million, 3 million, and all those um, numbers lie to the right on the number line. Okay? So always take a couple extra seconds to determine which way um, your, your arrow will go by um, thinking up some numbers that would fit the criteria that is given within your inequality, okay? All right, the next problem, number two, it says eight plus three times x is gonna be less than 14. So let's build it, start with that variable. They multiplied it by that positive three, and then they had added eight. So the inverse operation of adding 8 is to subtract 8. That's what you do, that is what you will do to both sides. That's 0, um, 14 subtract 8 is 6. Bring down your inequality sign, bring down your positive 3x. Go up here, inverse operation of times 3 is divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 1 times x is x. And then 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then I did not multiply or divide by negative, so don't reverse the sign. Don't flip it. So I can write it that way, or we can write the 2 first and the variable second. Notice that that 2 is larger. So over here, the 2 is still larger, OK? I'm going to go ahead and put a rectangle around that. So hopefully you can find it. How do you like that? All right, now my number line. Make sure you put that 2 on there. It's going to be an open circle because it, 2 is not a possible answer. And then it says 2 is bigger than x. So numbers that are smaller than 2 that x could be would be like 1, negative 2, negative 99. Um, and those numbers would lie to the left on the number line. OK, number 3. It says 1 half times x minus 4 is less than or equal to 5. So to build it, go with, start with x, and then we multiplied it by 1 half, and then we subtracted 4. Inverse operation of subtracting 4 is to add 4, so you'll do that to both sides of that inequality sign. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0, 5 plus 4 is 9 everything down like you see it. Okay, now go back up. Inverse operation of timesing by half is to divide by one half. Oops, that's supposed to be one. Sorry. So divide by one half on both sides. One half divided by one half is one. One times x is x. Bring down your inequality sign. Okay, nine divided by one half. So if that doesn't come automatically to you, it's not nine divided by two, no way. It's nine divided by one half. So 9 divided by 1 half. And what you need to do whenever you're dividing by a fraction, you were shown to go keep, change, flip. So keep that first number, change that division into multiplication, and then flip your second number, which would be the fraction. Now multiply straight across. I want to put that 9 in fractional form just to kind of help it be easier for me. 9 times 2 is 18. 1 times 1 is 1. 18 divided by 1 is just 18. So 9 divided by 1 half is 18. x is less than or equal to 18, or we can definitely write that 18 first, the variable second. Notice that 18 is greater than or equal to x, so 18 is still greater than or equal to x down there. We did not reverse the sign. We didn't flip the sign. 
up here because we did not multiply or divide by a negative number, all right? So that's why it stayed consistent. Okay, now number line it. Put that 18 on there. It's gonna be a closed circle because you'll notice right here. And then um, it says x is less than or equal to 18. So I know it could equal 18, that's why it's filled in. But numbers smaller than 18 that x could possibly be are like 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, negative 22, negative four, zero, and all those numbers are to the left, okay? All right, for number four, let's go ahead and build it. Start with x, and then we had multiplied it by negative five, and then we added two. Inverse operation of adding two is to subtract two, so we'll do that to both sides, that inequality sign. That's zero, that right there is 90, Bring down your negative five times x, and your inequality sign. Okay, go back up. Ooh, the inverse operation of multiplying by negative five is to divide by negative five. And the reason I said that kind of weird and freakish is because we just divided by a negative right there, okay? So you should be thinking to yourself, oh, when I divide by a negative at the very, very end, I need to reverse the sign. So look, we're dividing by a negative, we're dividing by a negative. So that right there is one. So over here, x is going to be, don't do that because we had to reverse the sign because we divided by a negative. So if it was this way, if it was that way, we need to go this way, okay? And that uh, 90 divided by negative five is negative 18. So I wanna take a second um, to show you this because some people I think forgot it. A positive divided by a negative is going to give you a negative answer, and here's how I want you to want you to um, help remember that. Okay, remember this. This only works for multiplication and division, not addition and subtraction. Only multiplication and division. Okay, so let's backtrack here. A positive number times a negative number gives you a negative answer. A negative number times a positive number gives you a negative answer. A negative number times a negative number gives you a positive answer. That was all multiplying, I said times, okay? Now, here's how to use it for division. They're columns, so a positive number divided by a negative number gives you a negative answer. A negative number divided by a positive number gives you a negative answer. And a negative number divided by a negative number gives you a positive answer. So looking over here, I had a positive 90 divided by a negative five. So that's this column right here. A positive 90 divided by a negative five gives me a negative 18. Okay, all right, so since we've already reversed the sign, now I'm gonna sw switch the order, oops, I don't know why I put that there, okay. or write that negative 18 first, and then that x right there, and see how it says x is greater than negative 18? x is still greater than negative 18, because 18, negative 18 is less than x. So your number line. Draw your number line correctly, so think about it for a second, what goes right there, okay? be negative 17. Negative 17 is bigger than negative 18 because negative 17 is further to the right. Okay, so it should be negative 19. And it's gonna be an open circle because there's it's not equal to that, to negative 18. And then x is bigger than negative 18, the values of x. So numbers that x could possibly be that are bigger than negative 18 are like 100, that's bigger than negative 18. 200, that's bigger. So I'm thinking, where are those on the number line? They are to the right. Okay, your next problem, number five. So if this looks a little bit confusing to you because you have the variable over here, it's cool to switch the order, but make sure when you write that, rewrite that problem, you make it to where that 180 is greater than this, um, this thing, or this expression right here, okay? But I'm gonna keep it just as it is because you'll see that it's exactly the same, it should not be frightening. So we started with x, and then after that, they multiplied it by a positive two, so times two. And then after that, they just added 154. So the inverse operation of adding 154 is to subtract 154, and that's what you'll do to both sides of that inequality sign. 180 minus 154 is 26. Bring down my inequality sign, just like I see it. Bring down that two x, go up. Inverse operation of times by two is to divide by two, so we're gonna divide by two on both sides. Two divided by two is one, one times x is x. Now watch this, see I have to, I can do my x down there, right there, and that inequality sign down, 26 divided by two is 13. 
Okay, don't flip the sign, you know, don't reverse it because did you multiply or divide by a negative? Nope. So I have it right there and um, it says 13 is greater than x or you can write the variable first, that 13 second. So 13 was bigger than x, so again, 13 is bigger than x. Draw a rectangle around it so you can identify where your answer is when you go to study. Okay, now my number line, make sure you put that 13 right on there. That would be what, 14? <laughs> and then 12. It's going to be an open circle because 13 is not one of the possible answers, but of course it's still important. Okay, and x is smaller than 13. So numbers that are smaller than 13 that x could be are like 11, 12, 10, 9, negative 2, negative 1 half, blah, blah, blah. And that's all to the left. Okay? All right, number 6. Oh, it's like modeled kind of similar to that where that variable is on the right-hand side, but don't freak out. It's the same exact thing, method. Start with the variable, then we... Ooh, multiplied it by negative 8. Don't let that fool you. See the minus in front of it? So we have to write x multiplied by negative 8. Then after that, we subtracted 4. Okay? The inverse operation of subtracting 4 is to add 4, and you can do that to both sides of that inequality sign. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 75 plus 4 is 79. Bring down that inequality. Bring down that negative 8x. Do that, okay? Okay. Back up, the inverse operation to multiply by negative 8 is to divide by negative 8. Okay, you'll notice my little voice change. And that's because I was trying to emphasize that you're dividing by a negative 8. You're dividing by a negative number, okay? So, that being said, you know at the very, very end, you got to reverse the sign. Okay? Negative 8 divided by negative 8 is 1. 1 times x is x. Okay, and then, remember, a positive divided by a negative. Let's look up here positive divided by negative gives me a negative answer. So 79 divided by a negative 8 is like, it's a decimal, I think. It's going to be a negative 9 and 875 thousandths, okay? And remember, we need to reverse the sign because we divided by a negative 8. We're at the very, very end. So now we're going to reverse that there sign, okay? So it's going to look like, so it was like that. Now it's going to go like that, okay? Then the other way that you can write this is with that variable first, and then that negative 9 and 875 thousandths. So that's the tenths place, hundredths place, thousandths place. So you just go negative 9 and 875 thousandths. Okay, anyway, so that was larger than the x, larger than or equal to. Okay, so it should look like that as your, your answer in inequality notation. I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangle around that, so hopefully you can find it in the future. And now your number line. So if you're like, gosh, I don't know what to jump by on that, you can go like this for your number line. And it's going to be negative 9 and 875 thousandths. So about negative 9 and a half would be right here. So about negative 9 and 875 thousandths is just a little bit more, so be about right there. It's going to be a closed circle because that is that number is one of the possibilities. And x is smaller than that or equal to that. So since it could equal that, that's filled in. But numbers smaller than that would be numbers to the left of it. So like negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, and those are all to the left, okay? For your summary, I want you, I already helped you with the graph a little bit right here. I just wrote some numbers down for you. But um, solve and graph this inequality. 11 is greater than or equal to 3y plus 2, okay? Remember how it doesn't always have to be x. If they have a y, that don't freak out. It's the same exact thing. So build it um, and do what you need to do and turn this in when you're done. Have a good day. Bye.